Good afternoon, I'm Ken Rosado. Welcome to Eyewitness News at Noon. Lori has this afternoon off. We begin with those new developments in the Capitol Hill shooting. Miriam Carey was shot and killed by police after ramming her car into a gate at the White House, then leading officers on a chase. Carey lived in Connecticut and is originally from Brooklyn. Family members say that she had a history of mental illness, and right now investigators have no motive for yesterday's incident. Meanwhile, authorities have removed evidence from Carrie's home in Stamford. That's where Eyewitness News reporter Marcus Solis begins our coverage. Marcus. And Ken, Stanford police will only confirm that they were called to this complex in December for a non-criminal interaction with Miriam Carey. But sources tell ABC News that during that time, she made some wild claims, including that she was the prophet of Stanford and that her apartment was under electronic surveillance by President Obama. The investigation went on through the night. Scores of emergency vehicles lined up while federal, state, and local police scoured Miriam Carey's apartment in Stamford. We deconned ourselves coming in and coming out. We secured it with, a, with our robot, and um, then we went in and secured some evidence. The collection of evidence and attempt to explain this behavior. Yesterday's wild police chase in Washington, D.C. Authorities say Carrie attempted to drive her black infinity oh. past barricades at the White House and the Capitol. The 34-year-old was shot dead. Her one-year-old daughter in the back seat was not injured. It's crazy to me that she, you know, lives here and she went to D.C. and did that, especially with a child in the car. Carrie had no criminal record, but a picture of her struggles with mental illness is emerging. In December, she was forcibly taken for a mental evaluation after she claimed the city of Stanford was on lockdown and that President Obama had put her apartment under electronic surveillance. Later that month, she was hospitalized again after her boyfriend called, concerned about the welfare of their child. In January, a social worker reported Carrie was feeling better after being placed on medication for postpartum depression. Carrie worked as a dental hygienist, fired from a practice in Hamden, where where she had a number of disputes with building management over parking. And I noticed a car parked in the handicapped parking at 7 o'clock in the morning every day and leaving at about 5.30 every afternoon. At the Woodside Green condo complex this morning, workers replaced a window which was broken by police. Neighbors say they never witnessed strange behavior. She seemed very happy with her daughter, very proud of her daughter. Um, I would see them out on the, gr on the green um, having picnics. Um, she was just a regular neighbor. Well, Stanford police say they are now done here at the location. A residents free to come and go. Some residents uh, were evacuated overnight while this investigation went on. As for Carrie's one-year-old daughter, Erica, she remains in protective custody. And we're live in Stanford. Marcus Solis, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Marcus, thank you. And Miriam Carey lived in Stanford but grew up in Brooklyn. Her family still lives in Bed-Stuy. They left their home this morning without speaking with reporters. Carey's sister, Valerie, is a former NYPD sergeant. Last night, police went to the apartment to question the family. So far, no one who knew Miriam Carey can explain the actions of the woman who seemed to be on the right track. They're like any other family, you know, you're disturbed about these different things, but, you know, we have to, you know, mend the family first and find out what happened down in D.C. I grew up with her, and it doesn't seem like she would go through something like that. Like, it's just, like, shocking. Well, Carrie's relatives are expected to make a statement this evening. And as we've reported, Miriam Carey's mother says her daughter struggled with postpartum depression. ABC News chief medical editor Dr. Richard Besser cautions that there may be several factors that played into Carrie's me mental state. He says the typical symptoms of depression include lack of interest in the world, trouble sleeping, and lack of appetite. We only know what her mother said. We haven't seen her mental, mental uh, health records. And, and this sounds very unusual. Usually with depression, you have lack of energy, trouble getting out of bed, not a problem with reality. There, there's th something called postpartum psychosis where you lose connection, and that would be more likely. But for someone with depression to get in a car and drive from Connecticut to Washington, that, that doesn't sound like, like depression. Dr. Besser also emphasized that postpartum depression is treatable. Stay with Eyewitness News and ABC News for any new developments in the Capitol Hill shooting 